Hi guys, it's Thurl Inspector here. In today's video, I'm going to be going through the best overclock settings for every NVIDIA card on the Flux network or the Zell Hash algorithm. Before the video starts, if you want to support the channel, then I have crypto donation addresses at the top of the description. Any amount is appreciated. If you enjoy this video, hit that like button and subscribe for more content like this. So I have been compiling a lot of data from my own cards and from my friends' cards so that we've put this list together for you guys. I'm going to be going through every card and showing you guys the most efficient overclocks for flux mining. We're going to start out with the 1050 Ti and go all the way up to the 39. Last thing I want to mention is that these were all recorded on Mini Z Miner as it tends to give a higher hash rate. So let's start out with the first card on the list. The 1050 Ti obviously isn't a very powerful card, but we are not expecting to get much hash rate out of it. We have a power limit of 90%, core clock of plus 100, memory clock of plus 700, and a fan speed of 100%. This gives a hash rate of 13.2 sols and an efficiency of 0.195. Next card we have is the 1060. We have a power limit of 78%, a core clock of plus 220, a memory clock of plus 600, a fan speed of 85%. This gives a hash rate of 24.5 sols and an efficiency of 0.261. For the 1070, we have a power limit of 95%, a core clock set at plus 200, a memory clock set at plus 550, and a fan speed of 70%. This gives a hash rate of 37.6 sols and an efficiency of 0.263. For the 1070 Ti, we have a power limit of 80%, a core clock of plus 200, a memory clock of plus 600, and a fan speed of 75%. This gives a hash rate of 38.8 sols and an efficiency of 0.269. For the 1070, we have a power limit of 80%, core clock of plus 150, memory clock of plus 400, and a fan speed of 90%. This gives a hash rate of 44.9 sols and an efficiency of 0.311. For the 1080 Ti, we have a power limit of 65%, the core clock on plus 200 and memory clock on plus 800, and the fan speed of 75%. This gives us a hash rate of 55.3 sols and an efficiency of 0.341. So the 10 series aren't very efficient, but the 1080 Ti hash rate is high on the Zell hash algorithm. Now let's move into the 16 series. So for the 1650, we have a power limit of 90%, core clock set at plus 100, memory at plus 500, and a fan speed of 100%. This gives us a hash rate of 14.5 sols and an efficiency of 0.214. Next we have the 1660, the power limit is 80%, a core clock of minus 100, a memory clock set at plus 850 and a fan speed of 70%. This gives us a hash rate of 25.8 sols and an efficiency of 0 0.268. For the 1660 Super, we had a power limit of 95%, a core clock of plus 100, a memory clock of plus 1100 and a fan speed of 70%. This gives a hash rate of 27.2 sols and an efficiency of 0 0.229. Last of the 16 series, we have the 1660 Ti, which had a power limit of 80%, a core clock of plus 140, a memory clock of minus 1000, and a fan speed of 75%. This gives us a hash rate of 30.7 sols and an efficiency of 0.3. So that's the 16 series covered. They didn't really have great hash rates when it comes to the network. So now let's get into the 20 series cards. So first card is the 2060, we have a power limit of 80%, a core clock of 160, a memory clock of 850, and a fan speed of 80%. This gives a hash rate of 39.2 and an efficiency of 0 0.306. Next we have the 2060 Super, with a power limit at 150%, the core clock at plus 130, the memory clock of plus 400, and a fan speed of 70%. For the 2070, we have a power limit of 100%, a core clock of plus 100, a memory clock at plus 900, and a fan speed of 70%. This gives a hash rate of 62 sols and an efficiency of 0 0.354. For the 2070 Super, we have a power limit of 125%, the core clock at plus 125, 
memory clock at plus 1000 and a fan speed of 90%. This gives a hash rate of 63 souls and an efficiency of 0.385. Next we have the 2080 with a power limit of 90%, a core clock of plus 100, memory clock of plus 1500 and a fan speed of 80%. This gives a hash rate of 65 souls and an efficiency of 0.321. The last of the 20 series cards is the 2080 Super. We had a power limit of 125%, a core clock at plus 120, a memory clock at plus 1600, and a fan speed at 75%. This gave a hash rate of 62 souls and an efficiency of 0.43. So the 20 series cards are very good when it comes to the Zell hash algorithm. And we will compare the best cards once we go through the 30 series. So the first card we have is the 3060, we have a power limit of 80%, a core clock of plus 230, a memory clock of plus 1100 and a fan speed of 80%. This gives a hash rate of 40 and an efficiency of 0.294. For the 3060 Ti we have a power limit of 90%, a core clock of plus 200, a memory clock of plus 2000 and a fan speed of 75%. This gives a hash rate of 52 souls and an efficiency of 0.288. For the 3070, we have a power limit of 90%, a core clock of plus 175, a memory clock of plus 2300, and a fan speed of 80%. This gives a hash rate of 64 souls and an efficiency of 0.323. For the 3070, we have a power limit of 110%, a core clock of plus 150, a memory clock of plus 1200, and a fan speed of 80%. This gives a hash rate of 69.4 souls and an efficiency of 0.239. For the 3080, we have a power limit of 93%, a core clock of minus 200, a memory clock of plus 1400, and a fan speed of 75%. This gives a hash rate of 84 souls and an efficiency of 0.282. For the 3080 Ti, we have a power limit of 100%, a core clock at plus 100 and a memory clock of plus 1600 and a fan speed of 80%. This gives a hash rate of 103.5 souls and an efficiency of 0.29. Finally, we have the last 3090 card. We have a power limit of 100%, a core clock of 150, a memory clock of 2300 and a fan speed of 70%. This gives a hash rate of 112 souls and an efficiency of 0.32. So there we have all the most efficient overclock settings for every NVIDIA card. Now I want to point out that the fan speed doesn't matter too much, but if the fans are up, you'll use slightly more power and your efficiency will drop off a bit. Also, these numbers do depend on how long you've been mining with the card and if the thermal pads have been replaced and such. So you might get these numbers exactly, but you might not be able to get close. Or you could go over these numbers, which is great. There is also the silicon lottery factors of your chip that comes in as well. This is more of a list to get you guys mining around the most efficient mark. So now let's take a look at which cards have the highest hash rate and best efficiency. So if we sort by hash rate largest to smallest, we can see that the 3090 is on top and then it's followed by the 3080 Ti, 3080 and then 3070 Ti. Then if we look at the lowest hash rates, we can see that the 1050 Ti down there with a mix of 10 series and 16 series. Now let's sort it by efficiency to see what card performs the best on this network. So the king of efficiency is the 2080 Super followed by the 2070 and 60 Supers. It seems like these 20 series cards are the best cards to mine this coin with. Surprisingly the 1080 Ti is in the 5th spot. With it being so old you'd think that it would be lower. I think it's up there as it was the last 10 series produced so the same tech that they were working on for the 20 series was somehow integrated into the 1080 Ti before the 20 series came out. If you guys have any questions about these overclocks then join the discord, the link for that is in the description below. Please like the video and subscribe for more content like this.